Hi everyone, and thanks for joining us again. In the last video, we modeled the head and neck, focusing on getting the shapes just right without wasting our time with too much detail. In this video, we're going to continue adding the ears and shaping in some detail that we'll expand on later. Uh, we'll also block in the torso and tail, paying special attention to our anatomy and how the different muscle groups fit together. So with that, let's get started. Now, for uh, shaping the ear, what I decided to do was uh, look at uh, images uh, of actual fish. And I decided I wanted the shape of uh, the pictorial muscles, or, or the, at least the pictorial fins of the fish. So what I'm using here is the shadow box. It's under the geometry shadow box. And um, in here, I can just mask out the, <coughs> excuse me, the, the shape of the fin and you can be really loose with this and you can see that it, it, it creates the, the profile shape of it and now I can just mask out the back and I get a pretty good starting point for the shape of the fin and what I can then do is use the deform tools and just start bending it into the shape that I actually want you can also see that the resolution isn't that high and that's fine, we're, we're going to uh, build on that and, and get it to a better shape. Uh, something to also keep in mind is that this is not going to be the, the, the final model. We're still going to uh, retopologize everything and um, get our fine details in after we've retopologized. This is really just to get the basic shape in. I'm just positioning the ear more or less where I want it. And I'm using uh, Dynamesh and I'm just keeping my reference image to the side with the light box or the spotlight, I'm sorry. Um, you might see that uh, because the resolution is so low that you lose geometry so I'm just using the sphere just to uh, build up that geometry again. Uh, and I realized that I forgot to put on back face masking. So putting that back in, building it up with a clay build up brush, and adding that sphere again just to fix up that geometry that we've lost in the Dynamesh. Now it's... Um, it's important to keep loose at this stage. Uh, don't uh, start getting into details. Uh, fix up any problems that you might see. But as you as you can see here, the the geometry is really loose. It's it's not focused on any sort of detail. Um, it's it's all about the big shapes. So I'm just using the trim dynamic brush again, fixing up some issues. And I'm using the um, Damien Standard Brush again just to get some of those those hard edges back. And I'm always looking at um, different angles and using the Move Brush just to shape it so that uh, angles that need to be straight I can just move into a straight line, things that need to be curved, I can curve them. And what I'm doing here now is um, kind of adding some shapes. Uh, I'm thinking ahead of how the transition is going to be from this fin into the face. So I'm thinking of shapes like shells or even, um, it's hard to see on this video, but the, the shape that the, that the muscles of the fish actually make coming off that pectoral fin uh, kind of re resembles the shape that uh, scales have. So I'm trying to work that in. And now I'm just using the uh, Damien Standard Brush again to uh, work in those, those little bones, I suppose you can call them. Um, just getting more or less that shape in there. I'm not worried about the detail right now. 
uh, but I'm kind of making notes for myself what they look like. And now I'm just using the, the snake hook brush to add some of those spines. Otherwise, uh, without those spines, they really look like leaves. <laughs> And the snake hook brush is really neat to kind of get that curve at the at the tip of the of those spines. I'm just mirroring everything, uh, getting everything into a subtool using the uh, I think it's the subtool master. And those backsides still need to be finished. And I'm not going to be very meticulous about it. I'm just adding kind of like a mirror image. Now because the, the geometry is misshaped, uh, we can't use the symmetry brush, um, so you really need to do both sides. And always remember to keep that uh, back face masking on, otherwise a thin mesh like this, it's, it's going to go through to the other side and it's going to destroy everything you've already done. So I'm just mirroring it again. Oh, sorry. I not yet. Still adding some detail. But as you can see, it, it just kind of resembles what we've done in the front side. Adjusting it again. This is what's really nice about ZBrush. You can you can work on parts of the, uh, of, the of, of the character and still shape them without destroying everything that you've already done. Shaping and scaling everything. And when I'm happy, I can just uh, mirror it. Now I'm just using the inflate brush just to get some of that volume back. And kind of lose the volume as you're sculpting because you're cutting into the clay. Just adding some of that volume. Now that I'm happy with the shape and the location, uh, I merge everything together and dynamesh. And I'm just smoothing that edge, that hard edge that I've made. And I'm going in with the clay buildup brush again and thinking how it's going to transition into the into the face. And it kind of feels to me like there should be tendons attaching it to the face. So just sculpting that in. And now I'm kind of noodling, um, but it's more or less uh, just a sketch for myself, just to get an idea of um, how I'm going to approach this. So I'm using the Damien Standard Brush again to continue with that scaled shape, that same shape that we used um, in the fin. I'm, I'm kind of spreading that into the face, and it's just a note for myself uh, of a possible idea that I can use later. And now I'm seeing, well, it actually works, so I'm going to try to continue that same pattern in, in the fin itself. It's always a good idea to uh, repeat your designs throughout your entire model. Uh, you might have a shape that is uh, a, a global shape for something, and repeating that same shape um, into the minute details. Um, but there I've, I've kind of stopped myself from adding too many details. The only thing I wanted to add was uh, kind of these scales at the at that very top um, part of the fin. Not getting into too many details. It's just laying down the broad strokes. Now, what I was thinking was, uh, it's nice to have that fin there, um, almost like a, uh, like our ears are, are just actually the external ear is actually just the extension of, uh, of the actual, um, shall we say, hearing device. <laughs> um, so I'm thinking about the same thing that that fin is exactly the same. There still needs to be something that that she would use to hear from. 
some adding that same shell shape um, to the head to uh, add an ear. Okay, before we get into uh, the actual modeling, uh, let's quickly look at what the um, what the torso looks like. So let's say we have our head here, and we've got uh, our neck coming down like this. It's a really, really rough sketch. Let's get an eye line in there. Um, the shape of the of the torso is kind of shaped like a raindrop. So it flares this way, it flares forward. So we kind of have want to have this shape. So it's more straight at the front than it is from the back. So the back actually curves forward, while the front actually stays stays put. And be careful not to uh, make your torso too wide, because it's not the torso actually that, that gives you uh, uh, volume from the front. Um, it's actually the shoulders that give you the size. So the torso is really, really thin actually, coming straight out of that neck. And if you look at this shape it makes, it's kind of, if you imagine it's a, it's a collar, from a shirt, kind of like that. If you can imagine that, that is almost the shape, that, that is actually the point where the clavicle comes together. So let's get that out. So we're just imagining that shape, but the, the, um, the clavicle wraps around and comes up, it comes back up. It doesn't just go down at the end. It actually comes back up. So we kind of have that shape for the clavicle. Okay. Um, now there are two points on the clavicle that are really prominent, and that's right here at this notch here, and then right here, there's kind of like this triangular this triangular shape that's indented. It goes in. And that's because this pectoral muscle actually folds from underneath that bone. So we get this little indentation right at the corners. And that's what gives it the shape. This is actually relatively flat or, or smooth. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And this sternocleido muscle actually articulates to our, our clavicles right there. So that's kind of the shape that we're looking for, for the, for the clavicles. Now the next thing that we need to uh, work in is the pectoral muscles. So our sternum goes down quite a bit, uh, almost three quarters of the, uh, uh, two thirds of the way. And it articulates, uh, well, not, it ends right here in the xiphoid process. It's that little cartilage bone thingy that you have at the bottom of, of, uh, of your rib cage. So, and from the side, it's curved almost in a triangle. It's that shape. It's not round and it's definitely not flat it makes this triangular shape and the xiphoid process is right down there. Now the rib cage actually folds around like this and again what are we looking for? We're looking for our protrusions, the things that we see um, are really uh, visible when the skin and the muscle and everything is on top. So we've got, uh, we've got again, two places. Right here is about halfway from the xiphoid process to this little edge here. We've got an indentation. Again, we can use a triangular shape. And that's because um, right here, um, the abdominal muscle 
comes down here. It's the um, rectus abdominis. I'm not totally sure of the name. So that's what happens. So you get this triangle here as well. So that's an indentation. And here, right here where the rib cage wraps around, this piece is going to come out. So that's going to be prominent as well. So there's our rib cage. And keeping in mind that we have that triangular shape. Right. So we've got our ribs coming out there. Now, uh, for the pectoral muscles, they actually are, as we've said, they come from this triangular indentation right here. Now, whether you're modeling uh, male or female, it doesn't matter. They look exactly the same. Uh, it's just the size that really, uh, that really changes, but the pectoral muscles look exactly the same. And they make kind of this, this boxy shape like this. Okay, and this articulation we're going to cover right now because it is covered by the deltoid muscle. So the deltoid muscle is kind of, again, this, this teardrop shape. So the pectoral muscle actually goes underneath that deltoid muscle. Kind of like this. And it's going to look weird now because what we don't have is the trapezius muscle that goes here and articulates with the deltoid muscle. Right. Now, uh, from the back, uh, let's look at... Let's get a shape in there. So this is going to be the back getting that flow in there. Okay, so our deltoid muscles would come out and articulate right there. So let's just take this line out. That would be the deltoid. And something like that. Okay, here we have the trapezius muscle coming down and it's got two so one on either side and they kind of articulate like this making this star shape and it's really that indentation right here that makes the shape of the, the trapezius muscles and in here we've got this boxy shape again and this is the scapula and you can see the deltoid muscle actually covers the top part of the scapula and here is the most prominent part um, the it's a bony protrusion that comes out and the most tricky part is right here and that's the uh, latissimus dorsi, if I'm pr pronouncing that correctly. Um, now this muscle from the back looks like this. But it wraps around underneath that, that bony protrusion from our uh, ribcage. It wraps around and it comes down like this on either side okay. and the, uh, the the front part of that latissimus dorsi uh, changes names so that would be the uh, the obliques but it's actually the same group of muscles that wraps around the entire body So that would be the basic shape. That's pretty
pretty much all the muscles of the torso. Now, we really can't speak about the torso if we, we're not working on the arms as well. So let's look at the bicep muscle that comes, it kind of articulates, it, it doesn't really, but uh, for our purposes, we can articulate it with this end piece of the, um, of the pectoral muscle. So it is kind of this shape. That would be the bicep muscle. And it, it folds underneath uh, the deltoid muscle. And from the back, what we have is the tricep muscles. And this is a really difficult shape because it looks almost like this. And then you've got another muscle coming in like this this. That's kind of what the backside looks like. And if you're really muscular, you might see some of the bicep at the front. Uh, for females, generally, you wouldn't see that. So it would just be like this. Okay. So for this view, we might see a little bit of that tricep coming in there again. And then for now, we're just going to end our, uh, our arm right there at the elbow because the, the rest of the shape is still coming. Now, for, um, for the stomach muscles, we have, uh, you might think of it as a group of five. So you've got one, two, three, four, and a five. And right here at the bottom of the, 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 the fourth group, that's where, where the belly button comes in. So if we take this, it's another group of muscles, and this muscle right here, that's where the belly button is going to be. And an interesting thing is, if you want to work on scale, if you move down the arm to be flat against the torso, right where the elbow is, that's where the belly button is. So if we, okay, so this arm is a bit long, so that's actually where the elbow is supposed to be. This is a little bit more accurate. So if you want to get the length of the arm, just measure it that way. If you move the arm down, um, the elbow and the belly button is um, parallel to each other. Now for head size, that really depends on your character. Generally, um, a normal head, you would have one and a half heads for your shoulder. So your shoulders would be there and there. That's for a female. Okay, for males, you'd have two heads, so half here, half here, and there would be the shoulders, you can see. So, um, but, uh, like I said, it really depends on your character. If you have uh, more of a childlike character that we're trying to do, um, I might make the head uh, slightly larger than... Um, than we need to. Now this sketch is really uh, really rough. Uh, what's going to happen here is um, the hips are going to come out kind of roughly the same size as the shoulders and we're going to get this shape and maybe bring those obliques in a bit um, just to get that hourglass shape. Okay so those are the muscle groups. So let's get modeling. Okay, so I create a, a separate subtool and just a sphere, move it down into place. And now I'm just using the move brush, nice and big, just trying to shape it. Now I'm using the natural curve of the sphere to create that 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 curve from the back. I'm just using the trim dynamic brush, kind of shape it. I'm always keeping the ribcage in mind, so I'm shaping it according to that. 
just dynamishing it. Now move brush again. Now you can see I'm getting that shape uh, of the rib cage. I'm not too worried about the rest of the muscles yet. Just trying to get that shape right. And as you can see, the, the torso is really small, actually, if you take away the shoulders and everything. And here I'm just, I'm just marking out. It's not really uh, part of the geometry. I'm just marking where uh, the, the clavicle is going to be and where the pectoral muscle is going to be. Really just sketching it out. And I'm hacking away at where the scapula is going to be and more or less where the ribs are going to be. You can see those two uh, dashes I made in the sternum just to get that angle. Now I'm just kind of smoothing everything out just to blur it out uh, because now I have a, a base to work from and I can use the move brush just to make sure that everything is in proportion. And as with our sketch, I'm just adding uh, that hint of the xiphoid process and just kind of hinting where the muscle groups are. I'm not really adding detail, not adding the, the muscle groups themselves yet. It's really just a hint. I'm trying to think of the protrusions and everything and getting that right. And now I'm just uh, insert uh, insert sphere and um, adding the, the uh, scapula just roughly. I'm adding the clavicle. And as you can see, I'm working on that shape, wrapping it around. And now I'm adding the deltoid muscles. And in sculpting, you really can. Uh, make the deltoid and that top part of the trapezius muscle, you can actually use that as one object. It's actually two muscles, but in sculpting you can kind of uh, get away by merging those two th together. Uh, usually with males, you can um, you should really make it two separate um, uh, muscle groups, but with females, because everything is so smooth, you can really make them one muscle group. And I'm just going in with the trim dynamic brush again, making sure that everything is uh, is working together. And there, I'm I'm just smoothing out that part where I said where, so we have that indentation at the at the sides, but the rest is really actually smooth. Moving everything around, making sure everything works together. looking at from every angle and now I'm shaping the the torso a little bit to get that S curve because later on when we add the tail I really want that S curve to come through and I'm just adding two spheres just for the arms and this is really just temporary like in our sketch um, we really just want the the bicep and the tricep muscles to get in there because they interact with the torso muscles so I'm not going to go any further than that for now. Using the trim dynamic brush just to shape it a little bit. I'm not thinking about the muscles at this point, just more or less the size. Now I'm adding another sphere uh, for the deltoids, even though we've we've already added it. I'm seeing that the deltoids are a little. A little bit flat, so I'm adding another sphere for the deltoid. And now I'm work going in there and adding the uh, the bicep muscle. And since these two are separate polygroups, I can uh, I can sketch in uh, separately. So I can really work just on the arm, and I'm really trying to get that that uh, bicep muscle to fold in underneath the deltoid muscle but also the pectoral muscle coming in over the, the bicep muscle. And it's really a matter of, of slowly building everything up. 
I'm trying to get that shit at the back. And the armpits are really just a product of these two, uh, the front and the back muscle groups uh, coming together. And that really creates the, the, the armpit. Now I'm shaping the deltoid again, getting that shape right. And now I'm really concentrating on the muscle groups. So I'm working first on the, the tricep there, getting those shapes in. And you can see that there are actually three muscle groups, hence the, the tricep. I'm using the uh, Damien Standard Brush just to uh, add the borders uh, to really make those those seams prominent. There, I catch myself noodling again. Um, I'm going to move on in a second. And um, what I'm doing actually with the deltoid muscle is actually moving them um, deeper into the uh, into the tissue so that they almost merge with the pectoral muscle. And then we can just sketch in the border between those muscle groups. And you can really see where the clavicle comes in at the sides. You can see that triangular shape that it makes, that indentation. And that's really what sells the, the shape of the, of the clavicle. I'm thinning out the arms because as we sketch we keep thickening the arm um, so it's, it's kind of counterintuitive when you're sketching in the muscle groups you make things bigger and then you need to use the move brush to make them smaller again I'm just merging everything together dynameshing and now I can really go in and, and make sure that all the muscle, muscle groups read well together and in a second I'm gonna shrink down, yeah, there I'm shrinking down the, the scapula. It's a little bit big. And now I'm adding that latissimus dorsi muscle. And in, in this sculpt I'm actually just doing the, the back part, I'm doing it in two two parts, the latissimus dorsi, and um, then I'm going to move to the front to do the obliques, because they really are two different muscle groups. But sometimes you can actually get away with wrapping the, the um, latissimus dorsi muscles around to the front, and actually make it one uh, muscle group, and that reads really well. But in this case, I actually separated them into two different uh, muscle groups. Just making sure everything reads well. And everything might seem a bit hard at this stage, uh, but it's really just notes for myself to know that when we're adding the details, uh, where those muscle borders are. And as I was working here on, on on the torso, I was looking at uh, pictures of sharks, and I thought, well, how would she breathe? So I'm thinking, well, instead of uh, adding intercostal muscles, uh, why not add gills? So I'm, <laughs> um, you can actually see it as uh, intercostal gills, breathing in through the mouth and nose and breathing out the side of the chest. Could make biological sense. Uh, when you're when you're creating a character, it's good to think about how your character actually lives, especially in fantasy creatures like this. Uh, how does it work? Uh, what would be natural? Uh, how would the biology actually work? So clearly, uh, she would have lungs uh, because she could uh, breathe uh, out of water as well. 
So in a way, something has to work. So I thought that that might be a good place to to add the gills. I'm just reshaping the the arms again and making sure the curves are reading well. It's not just the shape, but actually the curves that they make. I'm always thinking in S curves or straights or uh, whatever the shape needs to be. Okay, now I'm getting into working on the breasts, and they really sit on top of the pectoral muscles. And something to keep in mind is that it is not a muscle, it is actually fatty tissue that has this uh, teardrop shape. Uh, uh, so gravity would actually have a, a, a larger impact on it than any other uh, muscle group in, in, in the body. So the shape actually comes from gravity exerting uh, the force on that fatty tissue. And that's actually what gives it its shape. So as you can see, it's, it's really just I added two spheres and just kind of shaped them to move along the, the direction of the pectoral muscles. And that's pretty much it. And then just smoothing everything out. And then you have it and um, just getting the size right and the shape right because it really sits on top of that pectoral muscle Now I'm moving on to um, shaping the rib cage again. I'm realizing as we've moved everything about, I've, I've inadvertently changed the shape of the rib cage, and I'm just kind of sketching that back in, thinking of the, the flow of that bone, that last rib coming down, getting that that edge just right, making that indentation, and now I'm sketching in those six muscle groups. There's actually five. Um, we have six muscle groups, but what we see is actually just five. It's the, the four at the top and the one at the bottom. And I'm sketching in the obliques, it's blurring everything out. And then I'd come in with the Damien Standard Brush and just adding those order details. and making a, just a note of where the belly button would be, sketching that in. If you get the muscle groups just right, it's really easy to, to get the overall form right. Now I'm trying to, um, I'm adding two spheres again for the gluteus muscles, and for this character it's going to be a little bit moving away from um, human anatomy and actually moving more towards a fantasy creature um, since the muscles won't actually work in the same way that they would for humans since they all move into a, a solid muscle that's the tail but I'm trying to keep everything uh, anatomically sensible as if it could work in, in the real world so just adding another sphere, getting that in, shaping it, just to get the size right. Now I'm starting to sketch in some of those muscles. I'm kind of thinking of one leg and merging those muscles into into this one tail. So you would have uh, um, all of the shapes that you would have with one leg I'm actually kind of just mirrored to uh, to create the shape of the one one tail. And again I'm just shaping everything in. Now I'm just using the move brush and just shaping in that tail. 
more or less what I wanted using Dynamesh, smoothing out all that artifacts that we created. Now I'm kind of imagining the muscle groups uh, that would make sense. Just sketching them in with the clay builder, coming in with the Damien standard, just drawing in those muscle borders. And I'm also thinking that this would be a very powerful muscle uh, given the force that it needs to exert to actually move forward. So stuff like that um, is really useful when you're when you're modeling. I'm changing some of the shape again to make it fit more with the rest of the body. Okay, um, I'm a, just about at uh, 40 minutes now, so I'm going to end this video right here. Uh, in the next video, we're going to continue working on the tail, adding the fins, and then we're just about done with our uh, with our base sculpt, and we can continue on with uh, retopology, and then the fun part, we can add details. So, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and like this video, and I'll see you next time.